Well, with the holiday season upon us and major sales on the horizon, including Black Friday and Cyber Monday, it may be hard for many shoppers to keep track of finances. This comes as retailers boast once-a-year deals to appeal to consumers with the fear of missing out. But Elizabeth Namovsky, vice president of marketing at Caldwell Securities, warns that impulse shopping, especially during such tough economic times, may leave you with a mountain of debt. Well, joining us now to give us her advice when it comes to shopping this holiday season is Elizabeth Namovsky herself. Elizabeth, always great having you in Forum Daily. Welcome back. Thank you so much, Nima. It's always good to be here with you. Now, so many individuals live by impulse shopping, especially when it comes to big sales like Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Uh, so what do you suggest for viewers looking to shop during the holidays without breaking the bank? So you are 100% correct. In your intro, you talked about debt. We have never had this much debt in our lives, in our entire lives. And everyone just seems to be tapping. It's easy to tap on your credit card. And you're right, all these big sales are coming out, they're inundating us. And it's so easy to have FOMO, which is the fear of missing out, and YOLO, you only live once. So why can't I go and buy myself that really expensive piece? Because I deserve it. But the thing is, we've kind of been living in a bubble for the past couple of years with COVID lockdowns, people working from home. So the reality is kind of a skewed reality. And I think what we need to do for Christmas, especially, is focus on spending time with our friends and family and, and, and loved ones, because we had that taken away from us. And that, you know, with all the lockdowns and everything, a lot of people weren't allowed to go and see their family for Christmas or Thanksgiving or whatever the, the uh, um, holiday was. And I think this is the time that we go back to basics and we deal with kindness and paying it forward and actually spending time with friends, whether you're cooking together, um, having a bottle of wine together, baking together, or just even watching a movie. And I think that is, is worth more than spending more money and going into more debt. Some great points you bring up, Elizabeth. Now, in terms of debt and credit card debt in particular, uh, your advice is to check your credit card statements on a monthly basis. So how would this uh, help uh, people? You know, that's a really good question, Nima, and especially during financial literacy month as well. A lot of people will look at the statement, see what the minimum payment is, pay it and walk away. But, you know, there's a new thing called quiet spend or unconscious spending where you sign up for this new app, you give them your credit card, you sign up for another app, you give them a credit card. You know, by the end of it all, any of these free apps that you signed up for after, you know, three months have expired and they all start charging you and it all starts adding up. And I think it's really important, you know, to take care of your money and know exactly where your money is going to. You know, people talk about budgets and people hate budgets. They're like diets. But if you actually sit down and look at your statement, you'll know exactly where all of your money is going, where you've tapped and, and whether you actually do need that extra subscription. Because I can tell you, those subscriptions add up. I was listening to Kelly Keene speak, I think it was yesterday, and she said that Canadians, I believe the number was $3,000. Canadians spend $3,000 on subscriptions per year, which is a, a crazy amount of money. That is a lot of money, Elizabeth. Now, in terms of dealing with credit card debt itself, you're urging people to deal with the debt, uh, credit card statements completely and not just pay minimum uh, statements per month. So uh, why should people do this? How does uh, this help them? So we're dealing with crazy inflation right now. We are dealing with mortgage rates and interest rates going up and things are just really out of control. So instead of paying the minimum, pay off your credit card. And the bottom line is, if you can't afford it, don't buy it. You know, I was looking at one of my credit card statements from a long time ago, and it was $11,000. It was after my wedding. And it basically said that, you know, I could pay $10 per month, uh, which is the minimum. But it also says on your credit card statement, if you pay $10 per month, it will take 108 years and nine months to pay this off. So, you know, take a look and see at where your money is going and how much you're paying on compounded interest because you know that $1000 new phone might end up costing you 5 or 6000 dollars by the time you pay it off after your $10 a month uh, minimum charge so you know watch like be very conscious of where you put your money we all work really really hard for our money you know let's save it and let's keep it for ourselves especially for a rainy day 
All right, Elizabeth, always great advice. Thank you again for joining us today on Forum Daily. Thank you so much, Nima. Take care.